Malachi, you're back. Just landed. Are you all right? What did the doctor say? Lots of bruising, but there's no permanent damage. Don't fuss. Malachi, you were in the hospital in Spain for a week. A man who evaluates antiques for a living should not have to worry about getting beaten by thugs. The chest Senor Perez was trying to sell was a fake. It's hardly my fault he took my evaluation badly. You need to take security on these jobs. Some of these sellers are dangerous people, and you excel at pushing people's buttons. I'm honest, and that's precisely why my clients hire me. Is there any urgent business? I have a few things to fill you in on. Let me know when you've had a chance to settle in. We should catch up on what's been going on while I was away. Let's do it. So what's the next assignment? You just got here. You probably haven't even been to your penthouse yet. That wasn't the question. <sighs> Fine. There's a supposedly undiscovered Rembrandt in Rome for Sotheby's, and two pieces in Egypt for Rutherford's. Take them both. Malachi, you just got out of the hospital. You should let your body rest, at least long enough to get used to a time zone. With the economy in the gutter, there are a lot of desperate people right now. Desperate enough to sell Grandma's Harrington or create a good forgery. I might as well make the money while I can. You're driving yourself too hard. Your body needs- What my body needs is no concern of yours. No. Thanks for reminding me. There was also a new client who called. Something about a government contract. You said in your email that you've been looking into security options? I made a list of the reputable security agencies in New York. You should have a bodyguard travel with you. With the money you earn on these assignments, you can afford it. No, they'd only get in the way and be tiresome. I prefer to travel alone. Fine. There are other options. Who is this new client? Amble Dexter, 452 Central Park West. He wouldn't say what it was about, just that he needed someone with your expertise. If he wouldn't even say what it's about, then it's not worth my time following up. Well, it is a very upscale address, but do as you please. What other options do you have for security? I've been researching security agencies in various international cities. I can set someone up when you travel, have them meet you at the airport. I can't trust someone I've just met. How could I be sure they weren't already bought off? These are reputable agencies. You have to get over your trust issues. Hmm. No other brilliant ideas about security? I have a report on where to buy guns in various countries. It's not a very good option, but it's better than going into a bad situation unarmed. And maybe the mere presence of a gun will remind you not to shoot off your mouth. Gretchen. <laughs> I mean, give your fascinating opinion quite so freely. All right. Maybe we'll try that next time. That's all for now. Very well. I'll take my passport with me. There's nothing else I need from my... Gretchen Stern, my shop manager. She's efficient and intelligent. Very good at what she does. Unfortunately, she can act overly familiar at times. I don't need mothering, or girlfriending, or any ing for that matter. A gilded Jerome figurine. Quite rare. All of our items are one of a kind and in excellent condition. I do have a reputation to maintain. That cabinet is worth a bloody fortune. It's utterly unique. The objects in those security boxes are especially valuable. Gretchen gets them down if a serious buyer is interested.
Nothing? That's extremely odd. It's an unusual name, but there's information on everyone on the internet. Unless it was intentionally scrubbed. How did he know I was in Manhattan? And how did he get my cell phone number? I don't need to text him right now. I don't need to call him right now. I'd rather use my phone. It's a letter from Mr. Barosi, an antique dealer in Venice. He has a brilliant eye for interesting pieces. He's a little quaint. He insists on sending snail mail. I'd like to see what Barosi's found. Perhaps I'll be passing through Venice sometime soon. The bleak economy seems to be all the newspapers can talk about these days. I find it best to have my clients associate me with interesting but unusual finds. The artwork is all chosen for that purpose, and I change it every few months. I've always liked the sense of isolation in that painting. Dogon masks from Molly. I find it best to have my clients... I'm going to go see Mr. Dexter. Good, but tell him you can't travel anywhere for a few weeks. I'll do nothing of the sort. Good luck. I need to take these or I can get into trouble. They help with the headaches. My wallet. My passport. Here's my passport. Welcome, Mr. Rector. You can go through to Mr. Dexter's office. Use the elevator, sir. Thank you. Ah, Mr. Rector. What a pleasure to finally meet you. I've heard about your remarkable talents. Which I presume you'd like to rent in the near future. Precisely. Please, come in and sit down. This is Mr. Reichardt, my associate. Mr. Rector? Hello. Before we discuss the job that we have in mind, I hope you won't object to a simple exercise. Oh? I'm afraid I left my performing monkey hat at home. Please don't take it like that. I think as a historian, you'll find it quite fascinating. I'll think about it. Reichardt looks like the agency type. A ruthless little paper worm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Amble Dexter. He appears to run this place, whatever this place is. What is this exercise you mentioned? Take a look at this man. Tell me if he reminds you of any specific person in history. I read objects, not people. And this exercise is illogical. Humor me, please. I've heard you have a photographic memory and that your knowledge of history is beyond compare. I'm intrigued. A 
I'm not sure what Dexter hopes to gain from this exercise, but I am curious. I prefer to work on my phone. I'll scan in the man's bio.
Is this a joke? Not at all. What do you see? His biography reads like that of Raffaello Sanzio d'Arbino, the 15th century painter better known as Raphael. You do not disappoint, Mr. Rector. Such a pleasure to finally meet you. Truly, I'm delighted. Wonderful. Now perhaps we can discuss the job you have for me. Do you have a job for me, Mr. Dexter, or not? I do. The job is in Venice. A young woman of wealth and high birth was murdered there a week ago. Her name was Bianca Cardolo. I'd like you to go to Venice and investigate who she was and do what you just did so magnificently. See if she reminds you of any historical person. That is all. I don't investigate deaths. Hire a detective. We're not looking for her killer, only the facts of her life. A brief biography, if you will. And for you to document any connections you draw to any figure in history. Perhaps there will be none. That's acceptable as well. You get paid 20 to 30,000 for your work for the auction houses. I'll pay you 50. It should take you no more than a week. What say you, Mr. Rector? I might be interested, but first I want to know why you're keen on this particular woman and what the point is behind these comparisons to people in history. I'm afraid any further information is classified at a high security level. I'll take the job. Excellent. I know you won't disappoint me, Mr. Rector. Speak to the guard in the lobby. He'll give you your plane tickets. And Godspeed. I very much look forward to hearing your report when you return from Venice. I'll forward the relevant information about Bianca Cardolo to your phone. Very well. Goodbye. Pass through the scanner, sir. Mr. Dexter said you have plane tickets for me? Yes, sir. Have a good trip, sir. Thank you. Looks like I've taken care of everything here. I should head to the airport for my trip to Venice. I started a dossier on Bianca Cardello based on the information Dexter sent me. I should start there. I should call Detective Brunetta. Pronto, Detective Brunetta. Buongiorno. This is Malachi Rector. I need to speak with you about the death of Bianca Cardolo. I was told to expect your call. Meet me at 425 Alla Due Colonne. That's the site of the murder. Thank you. I'll see you there. Mr. Rector, it's a pleasure to see you. Welcome back to Venice. Thank you, Signor Borosi. Did you come about the figurine? Let me know when you're ready to see it. Signor Giuseppe Barosi. I've known him for years. While his stock is usually lower grade, he knows when he's seen something significant, and he calls me. Signor Barosi, might I have a word? How can I help you, Mr. Rector? Did you know Bianca Cardolo? Why, yes. That is, I knew who she was. She even came into the shop one time. Her murder is... incomprehensible. I'm looking for information about her. I didn't know her personally, but I'll tell you what I can. What do you want to know? Tell me about Bianca Cardolo's family. Ah, well, you know I love Italian history. Her father, 
Señor Antonio Savoy is from two of the most noble Italian families, the Savoys and the Capetians. The Savoys, as you know, were the royal family in Italy up until World War II. Interesting. Tell me about Bianca Cardello's husband. Dante Cardolo. You know, he is from the Capetian family, just like Bianca's father. But they are distant cousins. He was very popular in Venice. He could have gone far in politics. But his support of the EU at any cost has the common people very angry. Only time will tell if his political career survives. If indeed Italy survives. Thank you for the information. Was Bianca Cardolo wealthy? Oh yes. Both her birth family and her husband's family are extremely wealthy. There's no doubt about that. I see. It's none of my business, but why are you interested in Bianca Cardolo? Her story caught my eye, that's all. I can't blame you. It is a terrible thing. Oh, Mr. Rector, such a crime does nothing to help the city's morale. We could all use some good news, eh? If you learn anything new about Bianca Cardolo, please contact me. Absolutely. I would be happy to. I'd like to see the figurine you mentioned in your letter. See, si, see. Si. Here it is. Take all the time you need. I hope you'll find it to your liking. I know your taste is excellent. We'll see. How is the antique business in Venice these days? Uh, how good can it be with this global recession? Italy is drowning in debt, and the protesters keep even the tourists away. In all honesty, I have never seen conditions so desperate. Fortunately, there's always a market for luxury items. The rich get richer even in a downturn. How can you say so? The EU is about to collapse. There are terrible days ahead for everyone. Uh, I don't believe it's as bad as all that. The press love to fear monger. I am afraid it is that bad. Unless we can find some brilliant leadership to steer the world out of this mess, things look very black. Well, I hope I am standing here in a year, and you can tell me you were wrong. So do I. That's all for now. Thank you. As you wish. The figurine is an excellent find, Signor Barosi. It's a 12th century Lewis Chessman piece. The British Museum and the Museum of Scotland each have part of the collection, so we might be able to get them to bid against each other. Marvelous. Can I assume our usual split? Of course. Oh, that is good news. Should I have it sent to your store in Manhattan? Please do. 
Oh, and ensure the hell out of it. Of course. Thank you. I'm not ashamed to say I will be glad for the money. Borosi is old school, like a lot of antique dealers. He still records his sales on paper. I'm not even interested in the sales records from my own shop. That's why I pay Gretchen. His desk isn't old, but it's certainly taken a beating. I wouldn't have it in my shop. The soft lighting covers a multitude of sins. I never buy or sell anything like that. I hate lions. Unfortunately, they're very popular in antiques. Is it a lamp or a blow-up doll? Come in, Mr. Rector. Please, sit down. Thank you, Senor Condelo. I'm sorry to intrude at a time like this. I've been asked to speak with you, and that request came directly from the U.S. Embassy. Impressive. What interest does the United States have in my wife's murder? Do you think it was a terrorist act? Why would they want to hurt Bianca? I don't have the answer, Signore. I'm still investigating. Very well. I've already been over everything with the police a dozen times, but I'll do what I can to help you. It would help me to know more about you. Very well. Was Bianca your first wife? See, si, I worked hard all my life, and I'm not ashamed to say I enjoyed my youth. But a man who wishes to accomplish certain things in life needs a wife. Bianca was everything I needed. She had beauty, style, connections. I doubt I will ever find her equal. Tell me about your work. I am Consigliere of Venice. I used to practice law, but for now my focus is exclusively on politics. Venice is struggling, as is all of Italy. It will take the best of all of us to save her, if we can. Tell me about Bianca. What would you like to know? Did your wife play piano? No, she was quite musical, but she preferred dance. She was in a classical dance company before we were wed. As for the piano, Bianca loved to entertain, and music was always a part of such evenings. How did you meet Bianca? Bianca's family is one of the most influential in all of Italy. I have known her father for many years. I watched Bianca mature. She was the perfect politician's wife. She loved meeting people and doing philanthropic work. I knew she would make the perfect wife for a man of my ambitions. Fortunately, her father agreed, and I was able to convince her to marry me, even though she was quite young at the time. How old was Bianca when you married her? She was 18 and I was 43. But she was very mature for her age. She knew the life she wanted, and I could give it to her. She was happy in our marriage, especially once our son came along. I realize it is difficult to speak ill of the dead, but Bianca must have had some flaws. No one is perfect. It is a good thing that I, myself, am a man who often has to say things no one wants to hear because otherwise I would throw you out of the house for that impudence. As you say, getting to the truth is not always pleasant. She was a beautiful young woman. She had some insecurities. Never thought she was good enough, perfect enough. Perhaps I should be grateful for that. If she had been more confident, she might never have married me. I appreciate your honesty, Signore. Bianca quit dancing after you were married? 
Of course, it was hardly appropriate for the wife of a man in my position. How old was Bianca when she had your son? It was a year after our marriage. She was 19. Does that have some relevance? We'll see. I must ask you about Bianca's murder. If you must. Do you know who killed Bianca? No. She was a beautiful and gracious young woman. She had no enemies, nor do I. Tell me about the night it happened. Bianca wished to attend a concert. She had a number of musician friends from her student days. I declined to go with her. It was nothing important, and I preferred to get some work done. Now I wish I'd never allowed her to go out alone. You couldn't possibly have known. It's not your fault. I've heard that you have unpopular views. Perhaps someone took offense to them. Do you think someone would be cruel enough to hang my beautiful young wife because they did not like my politics? I think people are not very wise and often violent. I cannot control what madmen think or do. I'm afraid I must get back to work. In times of fiscal crisis, one is not even allowed the solace of grief. You may stay and look around. I have told the staff that you are free to come and go. You'll find Bianca's bedroom through that door there. And before you ask, the house has plenty of rooms. Bianca liked having her own sanctuary. We were happily married. I would be the last person to judge such an arrangement. Thank you for your time, Signor Candolo. Goodbye. I don't play. Bianca liked to entertain. I imagine there will be few parties in this room now. At least until Signor Candolo remarries. A wedding photo of Bianca and Dante Cardolo. She has a striking figure. What I can see of it around that large bouquet. I prefer to stand. I prefer to st Someone must have a love of dance, or bare navels. It doesn't do anything, thank God. Sympathy cards for Bianca. That brings home the tragic aspect of all this, doesn't it? I've no use for those cards. White roses. Traditional for funerals and weddings. Appropriate since both are equally tragic. Florist's putty. The material can be surprisingly versatile. Florist putty can be a useful substance Dance images and more family photos. Boring. There's a light breeze tonight. Perhaps it's an incoming storm. The desk is 19th century, Italian design. The notebook looks brand new. Postage stamps. Do people actually mail things anymore? Bianca's planner. It's open to the day she was murdered. She'd written in a concert for that evening, but there's nothing else relevant. Nothing interesting. I recognize that. It's a key slot, probably for a secret drawer. That doesn't fit. I need the key. It would be broad and flat. They look like drawers, but they're decorative. They don't actually open. Nothing interesting. Nothing interesting. Nothing interesting. Blank envelopes. Nothing interesting. A small desk clock. Worthless. Bianca kept some pens in here. No surprise, it is a writing desk. 
perfectly ordinary clear tape. Nothing interesting. The stool goes with the bed set. It looks rather useless. I can't relax in here. Too many reminders of Bianca. What a tragic ending. Her robe and slippers are still laid out, waiting for Bianca to come home. I wonder how long it will be before someone dares put them away. Senor Condolo said this was Bianca's room, which means I presume that this was not the matrimonial bed. Nearly everything in this room matches. I prefer a more eclectic approach myself. Really not my cup of tea. It appears to be an old family Bible. That must be Bianca's son. He's young to lose a mother. Gloves. This is quite an assortment. Not many women wear gloves these days. I wonder what Bianca saw in them. Interesting. This glove is quite large. It would fit my hand. These overly large gloves are interesting, but I don't need to take them with me. Gloves. Interesting. I don't need to call him right now. I don't need to text him right Some of these could have hundreds of matches, but I'm only considering historic people I think fit the general circumstances. I should talk to Detective Brunetta before I look around the area.
Are you Detective Brunetta? That is correct, Mr. Rector. Yes. I've been told to answer any questions you have about the death of Bianca Cardolo. I can't say I understand why. Well, I'm glad to know where you stand, Detective. Let's get started, if you don't mind. It's always good to know your source. You won't mind telling me something about yourself? That depends on what you want to know. This is a high-profile case, isn't it? You've been working on it around the clock. That's right. Never lets you go, a case like this. And what is your stake in it, Rector? I'm not trying to find her killer. I just need information. And you're a luckier man than I. But if you mean you'll stay out of my way, then I'm glad for it. You've been a detective for a long time. Twenty years, at least. That's right. Someone told you about me? Your experience is obvious. I will take that as a compliment. Do you know the Cardolo family personally? I'm not a part of that high society, even if I have the time to have a social life, which I don't. You said you were told to answer my questions. Can I ask by whom? You don't know? I'm not in the habit of asking questions I know the answer to. I was told it came from a mayor's office. You were hired by Senor Ricardolo, perhaps? I can't tell you who hired me. I see. I suppose I'll just have to keep my guesses to myself. Tell me about Bianca Cardello. She was a popular figure in Venice. Everyone knew her. She was even named the most beautiful woman in the city several years ago. The public wants her killer found, and so do I. Tell me about Bianca Cardolo's murder. We know she was followed while walking home from a concert. She ran. The killers caught up with her here where we're standing. They hanged her from this bridge. Sounds familiar. In fact, I read that much in the papers. I can't read your mind, Mr. Rector. If you have questions, ask them. She was walking home from a concert alone? Yes, her husband is a very busy man. As I understand, she often attended artistic events without him. Was she robbed? Molested? No, her purse fell into the canal. We retrieved it. Her money and credit cards were all there. Her jewelry was untouched. There were no signs of rape. Were there any witnesses? No one came forward, even after Senor Cardolo put out a personal request. Do you have any leads on the killers? No. If you want my opinion, such as it is, they were professionals. They left no physical evidence on the bridge or on the body. Even the rope was generic. Tell me about the Cardolo family. Dante Cardolo, her husband, is extremely wealthy and a very important man in local politics. Well-respected man, for good reason. Her father, Venetian royalty. It would be difficult to find a more distinguished bloodline anywhere in Italy. This crime has all of Venice in shock, and we have no leads. We haven't found anyone who would want to hurt her. And yet, someone did. Yes. If you want my opinion, her family had nothing to do with it. But that begs the question, eh? Who did? Those are all the questions I have, Detective. Maybe someday I'll know what this was all about, eh? I doubt it. Even I don't know what it's all about. But I wish you luck in finding Bianca's killer. I'll need more than wishes. Arrivederci, Mr. Hector. Arrivederci. Pardon, Signora. May I have a word with you? Yes? What can I do for you?
Yes, signore. What can I do for you? I noticed that you seem nervous, signora. You would be nervous too if unspeakable things happened just outside your front door. I do not wish to talk about it. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Malachi Rector. Buonasera, signore. I am Caterina Falone. Is this your home, signora? It's lovely. Ah, oh, grazie. It's been in my family for four generations. I would like to speak with you about the murder, signora. No, I'm sorry. I won't speak about that. I already said as much to the police. But I am not the police. You can talk to me. I don't know you, signore. And it is too terrible to talk about. No. Thank you for speaking with me, signora. It was a pleasure to speak with such a fine gentleman. Arrivederci. Caterina Filoni's home needs repair, but she obviously can't afford it. I can't reach it. Besides, the door is much more convenient if I really want to get in there. That wouldn't do much good. I believe that's a younger photo of Signora Filone, the woman who lives near the site of Bianca's murder. She's wearing a Venetian Murano glass necklace. I don't recall seeing it on her when we met. I don't need to call him right. Ah, Mr. Rector. I'm glad you stopped by. Someone was here looking for you. Oh? Who was that? It was an Asian woman. Middle-aged. She didn't give her name. She came in to inquire about you after your last visit. To be honest, I didn't like her manner, and I told her I didn't know you. I hope I wasn't wrong. No. She doesn't sound like anyone I know, and I don't care for people knowing my business. Let me know if she bothers you again. Of course. This Venetian necklace looks similar to the one Signora Filoni wore in her younger days. I think this one is worth a purchase. I'd like to buy this necklace. Certainly. Let me get that for you. Shall I put it on your account? Please. There you are. You have a good eye, as always, Mr. Rector.
Signore Filoni, I was so struck by your elegance during our earlier conversation. I saw this in a shop today, and for some reason had the idea that it must be worn by you and no other. Oh, Signore, how could you have known? Eh? I had a similar necklace that I wore for many years, but uh, recently, well, I was forced to part with it. I shouldn't accept it, but it has been years since I've received tokens from such a handsome young man, eh? How can I refuse? Mili grazie, signore. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm sorry to trouble you with the distressing... I really don't want to talk about that. I'm frightened. Of course you are. Who wouldn't be? But I'm not the police, and this information is not for the courts. It will stay between you and me. Well... A musician like yourself? Your ears are very keen. Yes. I heard a scream as if her mouth was covered by a hand. You looked out the window. What did you see? There were two men, all in black. Slender. Small. Did you see their faces? No, their heads, their faces. They were covered in black, as if they were in a play. I swear. Oh, perhaps I've been foolish. I should have stayed quiet. I... I must go. Thank you for the necklace. Signora. There's something on the bottom of the canal. Could it have fallen from Bianca's purse? <laughs> 